Here we are. Um, we're, 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 this is tea, tea with Tim, and I have a friend, Noah, um, who's making a lot of noise in his teacup. <laughs> and we're eating gozleme, uh, which is a Turkish pastry, and there's only one left, so we're going to fight for it. Oh, that's um, all yours, mate. Oh, Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> please. <laughs> What were we talking about before before we got so rudely interrupted? Well, naturally, because we both share an interest in satire. Ah, oh, yes, satire. We're talking about satire and its current state, and you were Well, saying, it really what, is in a state. Yeah, what, yeah, where does it need to go? Well, it, it depends. So, uh, satire is often used today, I think, as, a, as an excuse to... Um, it, it's a sort of posh laughter. Don't, don't, well, don't that's the problem with it. I think... I think I'm paraphrasing Tom Lehrer here or something. I he wonder. said the problem with satire is that it often leads leaves people satisfied and not angry. So ah. you, you go, ha ha, oh yes, I agree with that. It yeah. it titillates the converted, but it doesn't actually get to the target. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, and it makes attack. people feel very self satisfied. They know what the references are. Um, so what so 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 what we actually want to do is yes. to make people angry. And, and to change society mm. with satire. So the Profumo scandal changed society because it was really the first big scandal mm. once censorship went. And suddenly people saw that the people up in power yeah. were, um, had feet of clay, um, or, or <laughs> as members anyway. Um, Pr Profumo, the Astors, and, uh, and, and, and all that gathering. Um, and, 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 and that the and, and, and the shenanigans which go on in the bedroom have yes. an impact in um, in politics with the Russian diplomat. We use the term loosely. And um, uh, you know, but the question is: Are the similar shenanigans that go on today are they interesting to us? Because they seem to go on all the time. You know, they Boris on, uh, Boris yeah. only has to look at somebody and um, and and uh, oh, inseminate, inseminate. They go on all the time, as you say, and there isn't even slightly the same kind of public outcry as there was with the Profumo scandal. Yeah. So what are the taboos, so, what are the barriers, what are the targets well, you know, of mockery uh, that satire has to aim for we to have, be effective? We, we have to find out, we have to find it again. So you know, if you're, if you're doing farce, mm. uh, uh, so a Fado farce is based on, 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 on puncturing order, isn't it? Um, and, uh, and, and so the same thing is true with satire. Mm. You have to find out where is your order and then puncture it. Mm. And so if, if, if we haven't got order, if we're in the middle of chaos, what are we going to, what are we going to turn around? So, so maybe satire is exposing uh, the underbelly of our society. It's just turning it around. It's yeah. just moving it. Seeing things from another point of view. It's not about pointing at the hole in the bucket. It's about Oh, well, the there, there is no bucket. This is a colander. Um, you can't point at a hole in a... Look! There's a hole! There's a hole! Ooh, I've got lots of holes, madam. Just filled with holes. Look at me. Holy. You, you, you can't do it. There's no. so many holes. Look at Boris. I mean, you know... Yeah. Well, He's almost beyond parody, isn't he? Well, Pretty Patel has, has ceased to be parodic. I mean, you know, she's just become robotic. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I've got to find somebody else's paperwork. Oh, pass it off as my own! Plagiarise! Plagiarise! Sorry. I'm sure she doesn't, really. No. Well, we both love Doctor Who, anyway. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you a current Doctor fan? I'm not a fan of the uh, quality of the writing of the series. It's, That's yeah, it's gone been, down. It's gone down dreadfully. <sighs> gone down the drain. Who is your favourite Doctor? Difficult. No, it's not difficult. You, it, 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 it's up there, etched, etched in, um, in neon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Who is uh, your favourite doctor? Um, if I was pushed into a corner, you are. Be, you are. I am the. You are. You're practically pushed into the wall. Yeah. You know. Do you, do you remember the attack? Some... Do you remember the attack of the trees? <laughs> there there, there, was, there was a John episode, Pertwee yeah. one yes. about the attack of vegetation, yes. and all this vegetation was sort of creeping around the windows. Go on. <laughs> Well, anyway, I, like my garden. you've taken his name right out of my mouth. Yes. John Pell. Ah, so me, me too, me too. Reversal polarity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, and, all right, all, all, all right. So, so, you're a different generation. How on earth can you love John Pertwee? 
Um, well, I, was... I saw him. I saw him in Scrooge, you know, with with Anthony Newley, right. which, which 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 does a very nice parallel, a uh, very very nice see segues uh, back into um, into satire because mm. Anthony Newley yeah. was married to Joan Collins mm. and released a record called Fool Britannia, oh, which yeah. mocked yeah. the which mocked the royal family, which of course you love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, absolutely. absolutely. I, I, no, 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 no. And I, when I was a child, listening to the record, and um, Charles, Charles, drink up your cherry brandy and go to bed, and don't bring your horse into the breakfast room. <laughs> now, that, that was Joan Collins before Dynasty. Wow. And um, and Anthony Newley before he realised he could sing on one note only. <laughs> but you see, that would have created quite a fuss at the time, I imagine. It would have done because we never saw the royal family. Right. But if somebody was to do that now, I mean. Harry well, somebody, ha somebody yeah. has. They've just, they've just released the prints, and it's dreadful. Harry Enfield's got that Windsor programme, hasn't he? Has he? I don't know. Where he's... Uh, oh, the he's Windsors. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Windsors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't People matter. just shrug it off because well, that's, the, that, royal that, that, the royal family has become meaningless. The royal family has already become... Redundant. A, well, I wasn't going to say redundant. I was, I was going to say it's already become a soap opera. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that may be redundant, but it could be packaged on DVDs, you know. <laughs> Royal, Fannis, Royal Family, Dynasty 2. Um, you don't need the Colbys with the Royal Family around. You, so what's the point in them, Tim? What's, what's the point? <laughs> you remember Stephanie Beecham turning round? Uh, you can imagine the Queen doing that, can't you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you're evading this question because you're secretly a royalist. I am, I am. I just like the frocks. I, I think, I think, I, I, I you, the royal family is my idea of RuPaul. Um. <laughs> that's, also, that's not a good reason for them to exist. Well, that's the problem with modern society. The only excuse that beauty has for existing is because it's beautiful. All they are is a facade, Tim. Facades are good. Well, no, facades, look, 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 look. In... Um, if, if you go to Bath, if you go to the yeah. Royal Crescent, you've got that wonderful facade, and that is what it is. And it doesn't tell you what's behind the facade. So behind the facade, you've got about four, four floors, and, and the facade suggests you've only got three. Right. So, it's, so it's, it's a fake facade. It's a lie. And Pugin, our great architect of the skies, said that we should have architecture which is true. And he defines modern domestic architecture. So when you walk down the street, when you walk down our street, you see all these Victorian houses. What you see on the outside is exactly telling you what's on the inside. You've got a bay window. Oh, there's somebody in the <laughs> inhabiting that bay window. It's not a it, it, it's not a fake projection, you know. Um, so it's it, it's like sort of yeah. It's it, what what you see is what you, WYSIWYG. Really? Yeah. And really. <laughs> And I would like to think, I would like to think the same thing is true of the royal family. What you see is what you get. What you see is a load of overly privileged... sponges. Isn't that Boris? <laughs> ooh, I'm a sponge! Ooh, ooh! Sp impregnating a sponge. Um, no, and, I think that's and, a weak and, excuse, it's a, a weak, weak argument to back up why we should have a monarchy. I'm sorry. Well, you know, we've got to have something. We've got, them to, out. <laughs> we've got to have something for the shit suit to run up and Oh, that's Boris. Um, oh, oh, I've got something up my leg. Oh, it's a shit suit. There we are. Down, down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> have to visit my tailor, sort out the shit suit. To the left or the right, sir? Oh, uh, at, the, at the moment, it's all down Tim, the leg. This has been great. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Switch it off before before. <laughs>